You know, I don't think there's ever been more choice in air guns than there is right now. The styles, price points, engineering, and the options seem endless. This week's review confirms that thought. Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. This week is the turn of the Reximex Ixia. And there's all sorts happening here. Let's start with the walk around. But before we do, I feel I need to get the one niggle I have about this Ixia off my chest. And you know what? It's not the gun itself. It's the hard case. When it's closed, it's really rigid. Even open, it's pretty strong and rigid. But closing it requires two pairs of hands and a medic on standby for the emergency care required on your fingers after it's bitten them. Anyway, that's the rant out of the way. Let's look at this Ixia. It is 850 millimeters or around 33 and a half inches long and tips the scales unscoped at a meaty 3.9 kilograms or 8 pounds 6 ounces. It's all black, skeletal and tactical in styling with not even a splinter of wood in sight. From the front, the shrouded barrel is threaded to be able to add a silencer of your choice and although this isn't overly loud it definitely benefits from an external silencer moderator suppressor husher whatever you want to call it naturally this will add a little to the overall length but this being a ballpup design it's not too much of an issue below this barrel is the oversized 425 cc steel bottle which fills to a 250 bar max capacity, which should mean you're going to need a tow bar fitting to your car to bring all the rabbits back in a trailer from all the shots you're going to get out of this. And no, I haven't sat and shot every single one to find out how many, but it will be lots. There are rails, top and bottom. The top rail is a hybrid rail taking both dovetail and picatinny on the same rail. Nice touch. The bottom rail, however, for your bipod is simply Picatinny. This is a side lever, as you would expect, and I must say it's really positive with a nice cam action when opening and a smooth operation on the pull. It's not overly heavy or too weak that you have to question if you just double loaded or not. It's easily operated using your trigger finger while still on the grips. Below this is the blanking plate that was for the power adjustable wheel that naturally isn't on this sub 12 foot pound gun. There is the first of the gauges in front of this which shows the fill pressure and covers off the maximum in both numbers and a white, green and red colour coding. Again, the max fill pressure is stamped on the side of the main body to remind you of that maximum. With it being stamped on the cylinder as well, it's starting to look like a little overkill. Maybe they've had a few people overfilling them. <laughs> Who knows? At this point, it's worth mentioning the filler, which is underneath and is a simple foster fitting quick snap item. So no filler probes needed. Just need to keep the dust cover back on it to stop any debris getting in but i suppose that goes for all pcps really the second gauge is the regulator gauge and in this sub 12 foot pound simply needs leaving alone and this is just an indicator for you to make sure it's all working correctly the trigger on this is very match grade trigger looking but doesn't have the same level of adjustability and really on a gun of this price bracket it would be unfair to ask it to be so. It is very comfortable though and is a two-stage item with a pull weight of around three pounds from the factory. 
The next thing to look at is that safety. If the sharp-eyed ones amongst you just saw it, because this is likely to be a real Marmite thing. As usual, anything new and innovative will instantly have its doubters. This is indeed the first time I've seen such a safety, so it's very different from the norm. It is part of the trigger guard and is put into fire by dropping the bottom of the guard, allowing you to pull the trigger all the way back. To put back into safe, you need to lift it back up and close the trigger guard shape. It is quite defined and it's not sloppy, so it's really something that you're going to have to get used to. The grip is AR type grip and is a one piece polymer item forming the rest of the stock. Moving to the rear, it does start to get a little busy. There are adjusters going off all over the place, but I'll come back to that a little later. The rear book pad is rubberized and has an easy side button to depress and then adjust, which naturally saves getting the screwdrivers or spanners out, which has to be a plus. Right, chronograph test, which is where those adjusters are going to come into play. Well, I used 8.44 grain standard pellets and had both adjusters set to max. It then saw 779 feet per second, which is 11.38 foot-pounds or 15.42 joules. The next thing was to adjust them both down to minimum settings. This then saw 583 feet per second, which is 6.37 foot-pounds or 8.64 joules. So at this point, it's obvious they are working and having an effect. Naturally, here in Blighty, they aren't going to let you go over the 12 foot pound maximum limit, but they will let you turn it down. Next, then, was to max out on the rear adjuster, which is the hammer adjuster, and minimalize on the front adjuster, which is the valve adjuster. This saw 625 feet per second, which is 7.32 foot pounds or 9.93 joules. Finally, the opposite. Max on the front, minimum on the back. This was 698 feet per second, which is 9.13 foot pounds or 12.38 joules. Now, ordinarily, I can't see much point on turning a 12 foot pound gun down. But there are circumstances, I suppose, such as close ratting work in barns, where you don't want to cause any potential damage to property, etc. But for the most part, and most people, they will have this set on the max and leave it there. Of course, if your laws allow higher powers, then these adjusters will have more use. Let's get this kitted out with some glass, shall we, and see how it performs out on the range at 40 metres. Reximex Ixia, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, what? It's military style and it's heavy. Let's get that straight from the start. It is heavy. It's got adjusters going off all over the place that do work, they do make a difference, but of course this being sub-12, the only difference they make is to drop it even lower, which is not something that most people will do. Of course it's aimed more at the FAC market or the foreign market as well, where power levels will allow in which case you can wind it up, wind it down, whatever. The main adjuster is missing, which is just above the trigger. That's been taken out and blocked off to stop it going over the 12 foot pounds. Good idea, so we don't get on the wrong side of old Bill. It's got rails going off everywhere. It is very military. It's not normally my style, and you're gonna need a rest if you're shooting it. It is not something that I personally would take out rabbiting on a night or something like that or any form of pest control It'd be too heavy for me i would be tired by the end of the session or the night i have dropped an orion scope on it because it's it's the higher end of the budget but it's still not classed as a premium premium expensive scope it's very good 30 mil tube etc that's that one this is side lever it also has quite an odd way of loading the magazine because it goes in the round end first 
from left to right. Normally it's the flat and the square and the way you go, but now it's the round end that you carefully get into place and it's all done, it's nice and neat. The oddity is this safety at the bottom of the trigger guard, takes a little getting used to, and you can just about feel the gap on the bottom of your finger, your trigger finger, but it's no major problem. Shooting it without a silencer on, just because it's all right, and it's, well, I don't think they're gonna hear me over the wind, to be perfectly honest, but there you go. Right, the thing to do now is to get it down range. I've got it down at 40 meters. It is very windy, it's a 177. I have, to be perfectly honest with you, just tried some QYS pellets, and that was a complete and utter waste of time. They were all over the place, which is unusual for QYS, but this didn't seem to like it. Whether or not it's down to the conditions, I don't know, because I'd have to wait around a month for the wind to stop, probably. But we're going to try it, so give it a bit of breathing space and get, you know, be fair with it if it's not absolutely pellet on pellet, because the conditions are pretty heavy. The rain is forecast for the next week or more, so I'm not going to be able to do it and this is the first opportunity I've had. Hence the reason I'm doing it in the wind, because somebody's going to turn around and say, why don't you leave it till... There you go, you now know. Right, enough of that. Downrange. I've basically zeroed this in. And it was zeroed in with QYS, I'm now using JSBs. In between, it's actually grouping pretty reasonably. Not doing bad at all. It likes the JSBs much better than the QISs. Yeah, it's coming together. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. It's a 14 round magazine. I could carry on going and going and going. It looks like it's just gonna give exactly the same results. Let's go and get the target and see what those results are, shall we? That's not bad, that's more than acceptable in conditions like this on a 177. The thing is, yeah, and I was aiming for the, the cross, but I say it had been zeroed in on QYSs, hence the reason it's shooting elsewhere. It's the grouping that we're interested in. On a windy day in 177, I don't think that is bad at all. And if anyone's got any complaints on that one, you're a tough audience. Not bad results from this 177 calibre version. This is also available in 2.2 and 2.5 calibres. The magazines are simple to load and is the now becoming commonplace. Turn the front cover clockwise all the way, then drop in each pellet whilst rotating back. First one in, move round, next one, and so on until it's all full. You then, once it's full, slide it into the gun from the left hand side, but it goes round end first all the way. An unusual design. The 177 magazine is a 14 round and there are two in the box together with a single shot tray. 
The price on this Gen 2 version is currently around £740 UK. And in that, you get the hard case, two magazines, single shot tray, and a female foster adapter, and a shed load of adjustability. It is weighty, but that does add stability, certainly when shooting off a rest or bipod. This is, however, noticeable if you're going to carry this around all day. You are going to get a good 200 plus shots from this, no problem. And there is still an element of exclusivity with these down at the range. It is a nice thing to shoot and needs very few trips back to the air tank for topping up. So, that's it for the X here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, feel free to share and click the old notification bell so that you don't miss a review. There is all this lot and Airgun Factory to check out and of course the AAR on Air website. A big thank you to Vector Air for getting hold of this for me to review for you guys. There are links to some of the ancillary stuff below if you want to have a look, but not the guns, because YouTube don't like that. The biggest thanks, as always, goes out to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. Please stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully I'll see you all again next week. Bye for now.